atoms are not tiny solar systems. And in fact, they don't really even look like this. This is the Rutherford Bohr model of the atom, which has been obsolete since the 1920s. The only thing the metaphor is useful for is remembering electrons go around the nucleus. That's it. It doesn't even describe how or why the electrons orbit the nucleus. Whereas gravity holds the solar system together, electrons are held in orbits around the nucleus by electromagnetism, and the nucleus itself is held together mainly by the strong nuclear force. I'm going to spend the rest of this video describing the behavior of a solar system if it were like a large atom to show just how different they are. Pictures like this of atoms are two-dimensional representations of an atom which is, in reality, three-dimensional. While planetary orbits lie roughly in the plane, electrons have three-dimensional orbits. So if planets were like electrons, each orbit could contain two planets, and the orbits would take several different shapes. So the orbits of planets could look like this, or these, or these, or these. And the planets wouldn't have a defined location, they could be anywhere in their orbit, and the best we could do is to give the probability of a planet being in a region of space. The closest analog to electron orbitals in the solar system I can think of is the asteroid belt. There is a region where the probability of finding the asteroids or electrons is higher, but even in the densest region, if you pick a single spot, you'll likely encounter empty space. Except instead of millions of asteroids, there are only two electrons in a full orbital. And even weirder, the electrons have nodes in their orbits. They can be on one side or other of the node, and they can cross the node, but they can never be found at the node. So it's the equivalent of planets teleporting through space. Photons, which are particles of light, sometimes collide with electrons and force the electrons into a higher orbital. The electrons then emit photons as they fall back to their original orbits. So imagine if a meteor hit Mercury, and Mercury jumped to the orbit of Jupiter, and then released meteors as it fell back to its original orbit. And we could still cover radioactive decay, ionization, covalent bonding, electron delocalization, and many other topics that don't fit with the model of atoms as tiny solar systems. So really, I propose we just trash the model altogether. That doesn't really work.